As a common currency in the world, gold is not only a relatively valuable store, but also makes many countries want to own it. As the world's second largest economy, China has recently made some crazy behaviors. For example, China purchases a large amount of gold around the world, and this amount is as high as more than 6,000 tons. Moreover, China has already transported more than 3,000 tons of gold from Europe and the United States back to China. However, when China bought gold, it also sold some U.S. debt. Therefore, some economists in the United States claim that the golden age is coming and the financial order will also undergo great changes. Does this mean that U.S. debt will fall to the bottom? Will the hegemony of the U.S. dollar also change? Thank you for coming to my channel. Now click to subscribe to the World Answer channel and listen to us share important things happening in the world. Don't hesitate. Start now. Today, the entire world economy is facing a downward trend, especially the United States, the world's largest economy. Not only is it facing a severe debt crisis, it has also ushered in the highest inflation in nearly 40 years. In order to solve this problem, the Fed first created a large number of dollars and then began to raise interest rates aggressively last year. Such an irresponsible and aggressive monetary policy almost brought down the currencies of dozens of economies. This also caused the credit of the United States to decline suddenly, and the negative impact of the dollar hegemony was fully exposed. In particular, the United States froze the dollar assets and foreign exchange reserves of certain countries last year for personal gain, which caused the world to be disappointed in the credit of the dollar. Today, the United States still maintains the pace of raising interest rates. It is because the Fed believes that only when inflation comes down can they begin to cut interest rates. And they feel that only when the CPI falls back to 2% can they cut interest rates. If you look at it this way, I am afraid that the interest rate in the next few months of 2023 will remain above 5%. It can be said that the United States only considers how to solve its own intractable diseases, but ignores the impact on the economies of other countries. This is a very selfish behavior. However, raising interest rates is not a panacea for the Fed anymore because the U.S. debt crisis has reached a level that cannot be added. And in June of this year, the U.S. debt will face the risk of default. For the United States, this may be a historic disaster or cause a huge financial crisis and even change the financial order of the entire world. In addition, the uncertainty of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the possibility of renewed war in the Middle East, and the so-called Indo-Pacific strategy of the United States are all expanding NATO's influence. In this case, it is likely to promote the troubled times effect of gold, thereby forming a crowding out effect on the dollar. Perhaps in the years after 2023, it will be the peak period of global selling of U.S. debt for gold. That's backed up by the data so far, with gold prices jumping nearly 20% in the last three months. In early February, it once rose to $1,928 an ounce, the highest level in nine months. In addition, according to the report released by the World Gold Council not long ago, last year, the world's demand for gold has reached the highest level in nearly a year, an increase of 18%. Central banks around the world will buy a net 1,136 tons of gold in 2022, more than double that in 2021, and the highest level in nearly 50 years. Especially since 2019, central banks around the world have been buying gold in large quantities while accelerating the sale of U.S. debt. The U.S. dollar's share of international currency reserves has been decreasing, while gold's share has been increasing. This seems to illustrate a problem, that is, the stability and safe haven value of gold are too prominent. For decades, American financiers have relied on dollar hegemony. Speculative hype and cheat actions in the world have caused financial bubbles to flourish and the economy to be inflated. Now that the fortunes of human beings are about to be wiped out and the U.S. dollar credits are about to be exhausted, Gold, a value-preserving thing, seems to be more favored by various countries because it is not only worth the money, but also gives people a sense of security. So to what extent has China sold U.S. debt to buy gold recently? 
In the past nearly a year, China has sold 210.8 billion U.S. dollars in U.S. debt, which is equivalent to a net sell-off of 20%. Compared with China's highest value in 2013, this has reduced its net holdings by more than 400 billion U.S. dollars. Therefore, some American economics professors said that China may sell another 700 billion U.S. dollars of U.S. debt. Meanwhile, China has also broken years of silence in recent months. Reissued a new signal to buy gold reserves and announced the increase in gold for two consecutive months. Why do you say breaking the silence? Because since 2019, China has not reported an increase in gold reserves. It's not that China didn't increase during this period, it's just that China chose not to make it public. Until recently, China once again reopened and purchased 62 tons in two months. And this is only the part that China has made public. Therefore, some economic experts in the United States said that within the four years since 2019, China is likely to have shipped back at least 3,210 tons of gold in batches from major European and American gold markets such as the United States, the United Kingdom, and Switzerland, and China's current physical gold volume may have reached 30,000 tons. In fact, China is not the only one buying gold after selling U.S. debt on such a large scale. As the largest holder of U.S. debt, Japan has also dumped $240 billion in U.S. debt in the past year. In addition, Japan is also considering increasing its gold reserves to diversify international reserves and no longer be subject to the dollar system. In November last year, Japan also restarted the domestic gold mining industry, which had been stagnant for nearly half a century, in order to increase more sources of gold. For the United States, the more terrifying thing is if the Fed's interest rate increases above 5%. Then Japan is likely to sell U.S. debt in a liquidation manner, and then only 10% to 20% of its holdings remain. It can be seen from this that Japan is likely to become the main culprit of the historic collapse of U.S. debt. This is really ironic, because in the past, Japan was the friendliest partner of the United States in Asia. Today, the U.S. dollar seems to be powerless, and the massive creation of U.S. dollars has also lost its effect. In addition to China and Japan, the practices of many countries are very similar. According to statistics, global official agencies have sold U.S. debt for the 10th consecutive month. Moreover, from January to November last year alone, there was a net sell-off of more than 500 billion U.S. dollars, and a large amount of gold was also purchased at the same time. In particular, countries in emerging markets, in order to obtain greater benefits, are now actively selling U.S. debt and buying gold, such as India, Vietnam, Turkey, and Brazil, and other countries. Facing the liquidity of U.S. debt drying up, the two parties in the U.S. have yet to reach an agreement on the debt ceiling issue. One side thinks that the debt ceiling should be raised further, while the other side thinks that it should not be raised any further. The U.S. economy cannot handle it anymore and should be solved through other channels. If this stalemate continues, I am afraid that the United States will really do what Yellen predicted. In the summer of this year, there was the first default in history, and the possibility of a U.S. debt collapse is also increasing. It is estimated that gold will be more popular by then. In fact, there is no need to wait for the U.S. debt to collapse. Many emerging economies and European countries are already working to restore the gold standard. Or the digital currency system supported by strategic resources such as local currency, gold, and oil is fully prepared because everyone no longer wants to use the dollar backed by empty American credit as an anchor, not to mention that American financiers have little credit. The experience of the past half century tells us that when the United States controls the currency, the world can be at their mercy. Completely centralized control from oil to the dollar to U.S. debt is unfair. The United States can arbitrarily grab wealth. The monetary policy of one Federal Reserve can affect the whole world, which will lead to disastrous consequences. Human greed will expand infinitely. Under this system, the U.S. Financial Monopoly Consortium will ignore the interests of other countries. 
It is not conducive to the development of the world economy and finance if only one's own interest groups want to enjoy the benefits. The financiers have brought to the world debts that will never be paid off, continuous inflation, and the labor value of ordinary people diluted by inflation. So the world needs a new, balanced and transparent economic order, perhaps a currency system parallel to the dollar. The reason why it is said to be parallel to the U.S. dollar is not to completely replace the U.S. dollar. It is because the U.S. dollar has been promoted for half a century and has a strong inertia. It is not good for everyone to replace it instantly. We need to ebb and flow and then marginalize the dollar at the smallest cost, then get rid of its hegemonic status and finally make it a member of the multi-currency. In the new monetary system in the future, gold may be indispensable because its value is very considerable and human beings have not yet been able to find a hard currency that can absolutely replace gold. Therefore, whether it is the gold standard or a digital currency linked to physical objects such as gold in the future, it must be anchored by at least one valuable entity. But in any case, it does not affect the purchase of gold after the sale of U.S. debt by countries around the world. The liquidation behavior of these countries fully demonstrates that they are ready for future changes in the international economic order. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you think the video is very interesting, be sure to click to subscribe to my channel and let us explore more interesting answers in the future.